Hey people, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Welcome to a fun, cute, special, quick one. As you could tell by the title, just some big news come out of my life. It's It's been on Facebook for a while now, so it's on Instagram as well. So why not just chuck it on YouTube? You can straight away tell I'm having a baby boy. How fun. <laughs> and I thought, well, rather than just doing a stupid, you know, announcement, thing i thought well obviously we have to incorporate vinyls into it obviously i'm having a boy so excited it's due it's due he's due in a few months so yeah as exciting as that is i just thought it'd be fun to talk about five really really cool um literal blue albums literally just five blue albums that i own five blue albums that i love so yeah before we get into it immediately, without even thinking too hard about it, let me know down below what your favorite blue albums are. You know, um, just blue covers. They don't have the vinyls themselves, don't have to be blue, just straight up blue colors. You know, from any genre, it doesn't even matter. So yeah, I've got five metal blue albums to show you. So with that out the way, let's get into it. So the first blue album on our list, so I'm trying to, you know, I tried to, when I do these kind of videos, I tried to talk about albums that I necessarily haven't really talked about much, haven't shown to the camera, you know. And uh, this is one of them. This is one of the more recent purchases that I bought. Um, I bought this in Australia. I, I bought it secondhand, so I had to buy it. Normally I don't like secondhand stuff, but this one was rare, rare enough to me. And um, it was only 30 bucks, which is like super cheap for for um, for vinyls in, in this area of the world. So yeah, the first one I'm showing you is Dragon Force's fifth album, Maximum Overload. I ranked all the Dragon Force albums. I was gonna say, go check it out, but just for sake of it, this was my number one ranked. This is easily, to me, one of the best Dragon Force albums ever. It's obviously a little bit different than, you know, the typical Through the Fire and the Flames, Fury of the Storm Dragon Force. We all know that and we all love that. This is like, you could say, this is the, I, I think I said, this is the last of the good. Dragon Force, every album after this one, it's just sort of starts to get a bit worse. <laughs> the one after it, Reaching Into Infinity, was all right. But then the one after that, Falling uh, Extreme Power Metal, was just, nah, I'm not a fan. But this one, highly, highly recommended. It's great fun. I love it. Um, it's the second album with, with the new singer Mark Hudson. Well, I say new, he's been in the band for 12 years now, 13, 11 years, something like that. Um, this album's fast, it's aggressive, it is a bit experimental in terms of like, you know, typical normal Dragon Force style, but it's still really, really cool. Songs like The Game, which feature Matt Heafy on backing vocals. If you listen closely, you can tell he, he does a real melodic part in the chorus, really, really awesome. To level out Mark Hudson's high vocal, Matt comes in and does the low register, really awesome. Tomorrow's Kings, it's just this. I love Tomorrow's Kings, it's quite um, triumphant, it's really, really fun. Um, no Lies, sorry. No More is is probably the first skippable song, which is a shame because it's track three and already I've got a skippable song, but it's all right because it comes into Three Hammers, which is this epic fantasy power metal type song. Yeah, it's pretty much a Rhapsody song, but real, it's a lot more simpler. It's pretty much Cry Thunder, if you're familiar with the Dragon Falls Cry Thunder song, but better, I think it's better. Uh, Symphony of the Night, which is great, definitely one of the better songs on this album. The Sun is Dead, yeah. Defenders, that's cool, they open the gig that I saw them on with Defenders and that went down really well. Extraction Zone is fun, City of Gold's all right, and this, this, has, um, this has Ring of Fire on it. <laughs> um, they covered Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire, and it's okay, just, you know, the, the lyrics are the same, but it's just at 200 BPM. So um, if you have if you listen to Dragon Force, but you've only listened to Through the Fire and Flames, I highly recommend you check out Maximum Overload. It's quite cool. So yeah, quite happy doing that. Even if it is secondhand, I think it's awesome to have on vinyl. I've been looking for that for a little while, so yeah, that's cool. Now I've talked about this album before. I did. I've got two videos on this album. One on the album alone, and another video on the band. Actually, you know, the band, a ranking of the band. Um, Dream Theater's eighth album, Octavarium. Easily their best. The best Dragon Force. Dragon Force. We've moved on from them. Easily the best Dream Theater album. Um, of, oh, this album is just fantastic. I'm not going to go into heaps of detail why this album is great. I did a video on that. Why? What makes this album great? Please go look at it. Octavarium is a fantastic album full of all things that intertwine and connect and have deeper meanings and just so, so cool. Obviously with a name like Octavarium, you could tell, you know, the theme is full circle, you know, things starting as they ended, wait, all the way around, ending as they started type of vibe. But yeah, um, eight tracks, eight oh, eight notes in the in the scale, each song's in a different key, it's so cool. Um, the Root of All Evil, which is a fantastic song, easily top five Dream Theater songs there. The Answer Lies Within, These Walls, oh, 
these walls is awesome. I Walk Beside You is kind of cool. It's probably the first different type song on the album. It's very U2-y. It's, yeah, it's a very, but it's still good. Don't let that throw you off. I Walk Beside You is still a great song. Panic Attack, which literally sounds like the title. It's, it's got this ridiculous bass intro. It's ridiculous, it's so cool. It's just beep, 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 beep. John Myung is just ridiculous. We all know that. Never Enough, Sacrifice, Sacrifice Sons, beautiful two songs. And then Octavarium, the title track, 24 minutes of just pure epic prog metal. Just fantastic. I love that. It's a song that I could I listen I could listen to it daily despite how long it is. I I listen to it when I want to pass time. It makes half an hour go by just like that. It's so good. You know when you're waiting around at work and you know there's only half an hour to go, you're not too sure what to do. If you're able to listen to music, put that song on and it will you'll be home before you know it. Yeah, Dream Theater's Octavarium, easily the best. Again, I ranked all Dream Theater's albums. Go look at it. It's good fun. But uh, something a bit brutal for the death metal fans. Death, spiritual healing. I love this album so much. Um, I I remember I bought this album when I was only like just getting into death. I bought Scream, Bloody Gore, and this album in the in the same purchase. And I don't know what I don't know why. I was just I was just I pretty I kind of forced myself to get into them just because of how iconic they were and how important they are, and not just in the death metal scene, but in the heavy metal scene. You know, Chuck Schuldiner was absolutely. I keep saying the word ridiculous, rest in peace. December 13, 2001, I think he died. Um, yeah, honestly, Spiritual Healing is my favorite death album, not just because it's blue, but it's honestly such a goddamn heavy album. It's so amazing. Living Monstrosity is just wow. Altering the Future, Future is a song about abortions, and it's, I love it. But my favorite song on here is definitely track three, Defensive Personalities. Oh, there's just that breakdown part in the, uh, the middle where it's just, Oh god, it's so heavy. And it's in standard tuning too, I'm pretty sure. It's amazing that they could they could pull that off, but oh man. But yeah, within the mind, the title track, spiritual healing, spiritual. <laughs> Killing spree, genetic reconstruction, just honestly, fantastic death metal right here. Um, people argue that leprosy is the better album. No, not in my books. Spiritual healing is. Go listen to Spiritual Healing. Any song from it, you'll be fine with. If you haven't listened to Death before, I highly recommend you check out this album. But obviously, check out. There's only seven albums. Check out any of them. But please go listen to this one. Spiritual Healing is fantastic. I love it so much. Uh, since this is a vinyl video, I suppose I could show that it's like blue splatter pinwheel thing. Very very cool. I love that. Um, I wasn't purposely looking for splatter wheel vinyls, but I mean. That looks amazing, so yeah, spiritual healing, go check it. Now this one, the cover isn't exactly blue, it is, it's like a tint of blue, but the actual vinyl itself is blue, and I don't actually have a lot of blue um, albums, so I thought, oh, I'll bring this one up. It's, um, I rank this band too, I put this album at number, I put this one at number three, and this is Belphegor's Lucifer and Cestus. I bought this years ago, like, this is what this was one of my first vinyls I bought, which is amazing. Not to brag, but considering the condition I've kept it in, is pretty incredible. It obviously, it came with a plastic sleeve, so that probably helps the cover from being smudged. But still, speaking of the cover, I hate to offend people, but oh well. Look at that cover. Have you ever seen anything more brutal and satanic? I suppose you know. Obviously, Cannibal Corpse had more brutal albums, but have you ever seen anything more demonic? That's so cool. I just love it, and not just for the titties, but honestly, cover work, cover, cover art aside, fantastic album. So yeah, like I said, this one is actually blue, and the reason I bought it, obviously I was a Belphegor fan, I was getting into dark music at the time, like really dark music at the time, and Belphegor popped up, and I bought this one for the album cover, I hadn't even heard it, but I also bought it because it was blue, and it said limited to 300 copies, so I was like, yo, Fantastic, I'll have one of those, yeah. But what the one gripe I have with it is they entice me to buy it by telling me there's one of 300, but there's no indication on the album anywhere that says it's one of 300. You know what I mean? So it's like, did they just con me? I bought a, uh, I bought a tear album, and um, that one had, that one was like one of 200, I think, or one of 500, something like that. But that one came with a sticker on the back to say, you know, I've got 171 out of 200, I think. But yeah, aside from that, just please, if you like brutal black and death metal thrash, da black and thrash death aggressive music, angry music, go listen to Belphegor, especially this album. This is their third release. No, fourth release. This is their fourth release, and this is where the band pretty much step up, in my opinion. 
Um, the intro, Inflamante Christianos, which is pretty much, which is Latin for burn the Christians, I'm pretty sure. It's pretty insane. The goat Christ. Diaboli, Diaboli virtus in lumbar est. I'm not, I'm, I'm English. Demonic Staccato Erection. Despite the weird name, that's actually a really good song. I love Demonic Staccato Erection. Um, the Blood of Christ, that's brutal. The title track, Lucifer Incestus. Honestly, it's such an offensive album, but God, is it good. Go listen to Bell for God. You'll, you'll be burning churches before you know it. Honestly, love it. And then the last one is a live album. Um, this band, weirdly enough, my favorite band of all time. Uh, they've got quite a few blue album covers, but I, I don't like them as much. You know what I mean? Like, The Final Frontier is a blue cover. That's that's all right. Seventh Sun's a blue cover, but that's not my favorite album. Fear of the Dark is kind of blue, but again, not my favorite. So we're gonna go for their live one. We're gonna go for Iron Maiden's Live After Death. Easily top three live performances of all time in the heavy metal world. Honestly, this album is just wow. This performance is just wow. Um, 1985, I don't know the date of when it was recorded, but just honestly. Four consecutive incredible albums. The fifth album came out to be live and just blew. They conquered the world with this tour. World Slavery Tour across North America and just everywhere else. It's pretty much a greatest hits of everything up to this point. If you're familiar with the Somewhere Back in Time album, which was the tour I saw them on here in 2009, that was pretty much just a 2.0 of this tour to say thank you to the younger fans like myself who weren't seeing the older songs live anymore. So thanks to this tour, we got that tour, you could say. But anyway, Ace is High, Minutes to Midnight, Revelations, Trooper, Flight of Icarus, Ancient Mariner, and Power Slave. Obviously playing off all their great albums, obviously, the Great. Apart from Killers, there's nothing on this album from Killers, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, oh, Rothschild's on here. Sorry, I take that back. Rothschild's a great song, but yeah, it's just a great sense of everything. Rhyme the Age of Mariner, Power Slave, The Number of the Beast, Hallowed Be Thy Name, fantastic song. They close it with Iron Maiden, obviously. They play Run to the Hills and we're Running Free. And on the performance of the DVD, they play Sanctuary. Sanctuary is not on the LP or on the CD, which is I mean, it's all right, it doesn't matter. Sanctuary is a cool song. We, if you want to listen to that, you just listen to the first album, to listen to the first remastered album, but yeah. And then side four, which is disc two in the CD, The Case You Avenue, Children of the Damned, Die With Your Boots On, Phantom of the Opera, and yeah, Ralph Child. The fact that this has Phantom of the Opera on it just made it so much more amazing for me because Phantom of the Opera is Iron Maiden's best song. We all know it, we all love it. Iron Maiden is the debut and it's their best work. I ranked all the man's albums. Go watch it, it's probably my favorite one. But yeah, just another fantastic blue album to showcase the fact that I'm having a baby boy and why not do it with one of the best live albums of all time. I love this one, Live After Death. Go watch it, go listen to it. I need to put that on again, it's such a good album. Fantastic job team. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me while I show you some blue albums. Like I said before, let me know down below what your blue albums are. Uh, what else is out there? We've got Ride the Lightning, obviously. We've got Painkiller. Uh, like I say, Maiden, Seventh Sun, Fear of the Dark. Uh, there's probably, you know, there's heaps of others out there, but I uh, can't immediately think of them. But yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me, team. Um, like I say, my boy doesn't get born for a few months yet, so just try and bust out as much YouTube and musical stuff as I can before he comes along, because I'm sure my time will get taken up a lot once he's walking around and crawling around and just flopping about. But I can't wait to introduce him to the likes of this. Maybe not this. <laughs> I'll wait for him to get a bit older before I start showing him Belfagor, but you know. He'll come out and Sabbath will be playing and it's just gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to have a little mini me floating around and listening to metal with him. It's gonna be fun. But anyway, I'm getting sentimental about something that hasn't even happened yet. Ah, keep an eye out for the next video, guys. I'm this, I've am this. i got two albums left for my next ranking and then hopefully that should probably be out on Tuesday. I was gonna say Monday, but no, I don't think I will. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do studio stuff on Monday, so yeah. Get hyped for that. Two albums to go, so that'll be out soon. But until that happens, of course, we stay inside, we stay safe, we listen to metal, and I'll see you all in the next video. Later, team.